Cougar 22 RBS here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, just coming in. And if what you are seeking is couples camping, but you want big space, big storage, big feels, 70 by 80, true king bed, zero degree functionality, push button awning, tongue jack, and stabilizers, nicer more ride steps, and the automation capacity of having this thing, you know, operate from your phone at your fingertips anytime. Well, congratulations, your search is over. Slide closed currently. One of my favorite parts of the 22 RBS Cougar here at Halet RV is the high level of travel, accessibility, and functionality that this one maintains. All of the kitchen storage that we're going to see here, you can get to that. The uh, bathroom, the refrigerator, all very easily accessible right when you walk in the door. And it's, uh, it's early. I got here extra early and it's raining, so there's no sun, there's heavy clouds. So I had a really good opportunity to really take a look at the awesome lighting package that they have in these. Look at the difference that makes. Not only are they using double row lighting, but they're using higher intensity lights so that it really stays lit up in here when you want it. When we first got one of these in last year, I, I, I kind of mentioned, I, I said, man, this 22 RBS is just straight beast mode. And I, I, I feel like that's more true now than it was before. Like it's, you know, ultra beast mode or something like that. Anyway, what what's amazing here is what these guys have done is they've kind of defined themselves as sort of a, uh, a big RV feel in a small, lighter weight package. Cougar's intention was never to make an ultralight trailer. Um, they were simply trying to make the right trailer with the right features for the right price. And... Uh, they've they've got a dynamite package going on here. Uh, you know, like little key differences. Um, compared to a common ultralight, uh, what you're going to find here is like everything is a bit bigger. Like compare this to the Rockwood 2109S and the Freedom Express uh, 192 RBS. Very similar layouts, but this is just kind of like a sort of bulked up, puffed up version of them, but it's not really significantly heavier or anything like that is what's interesting. Even though the slide is deeper. Even though the walls are thicker. This has normal two inch sidewalls, not inch and a half ultralight walls. Even though it's got a, a full true king bed now. We'll get up to that in a minute. It's got like big big RV fifth wheel kind of feels all smashed down in this little couple's camper. And that's it's an amazing set of qualities. So um, more to the point. Remember that the one that we have in stock might be different, but chances are this is how they're going to look almost every day at Halet RV. Occasionally we might bring one of these in with a, uh, a U-Dinette, but more commonly what we'll do is we'll have the Cougar in stock with the light colored theater seating you see right here, and then the Winnebago 2250 DS, which is nearly an identical layout, we'll tend to bring them in with a U-Dinette so that they each have a little bit of different identity and whatnot. So if you are looking for different furniture, uh, chances are we have it. Now, this is uh, the lighter decor. Cougar's going to offer one light and one dark decor. Um, but the only thing that really changes is just the sofa. Everything else in the RV will maintain consistency. It won't change in color. One thing they did, uh, one of many, we're going to talk about several improvements as we go compared to the previous generation. Previously, if you added this U-Dinette, there was just these dead empty pockets on each side. Uh, or, pardon me, pardon me. If you upgraded to the theater seat, not the U-Dinette. If you swapped out of the U-Dinette into the theater seat, you'd have empty space on each side of the uh, sofa. So now they've added these handy little side stands right here. That's super useful. It gives you a nice place to set a drink, set your phone, etc. We still have the all uh, airflow windows and maximum size windows in their slides. That's something Cougar does very, very well. Neat little thing they do right here um, in their slide lighting, actually. They have touch sense uh, dimmer lighting. So you can just flip it to turn it on or off, and if you hold it, it'll dim, and it has positional memory. So if you do want to dim it down a little bit, it'll remember where you have it, and then you can bring it back to life. Bringing them down, dimming the lights is really nice at night when it's like getting close to bedtime, and you're not quite ready to go down, or you're watching a movie or something like that, you know? Now, I don't know... I don't know what it is about it. Like I said, the whole RV has big RV feels in, in a smaller, lighter very aggressively, uh, you know, appointed um, RV. 
but I'm 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 not so sure it isn't these accent strips on the on this open feeling vaulted ceiling right here. It draws your attention to the fact that the ceiling is bowed up a little bit, and it just really makes this thing look and feel huge. Now, last year, Cougar Travel Trailers had a king bed, but it was a uh, a short camp king. It was uh, 70 inches wide, but 74 long. It was an odd size. Uh, well. When they redesigned the nose cap to include this amazing front windshield that we're looking at right now, one, that makes the RV look and feel larger, but two, it made the RV larger because the nose cap redesign actually allowed them to install the bed six inches further forward without adding a single inch of length to this RV. So, now, in the windshield generation Cougar that we're looking at, uh, we have a true 70 by 80 Montana king bed in this little couple's camping trailer. And you can still get around the bed. You can still get to your closets. You've got storage overhead. There's a vent overhead for light and airflow. They have absolutely crushed this. I've seen other brands of campers for to like try and somehow fail to do the king bed. And again, I, I, whoever... the, the, the uh, what, What's his name? Matt, who designs the uh, Cougars down there at Keystone. He's got the hot sauce. He's got this thing dialed in. He's got it figured out. Now, a couple little details. We're going to talk about In Command in just a minute. But one of the cool things about In Command is it allowed Cougar to install a light switch up here on the headboard. And I want you to just take note that right now you're literally in bed with me. <laughs> anyway, so when you lay down in bed, you've got... Uh, a light switch for the overhead lights right in front of the bed. Now, obviously, we've got power outlets and side stands over here, so we're super phone charger and CPAP friendly. Now, when I flip that light switch, you notice that not all the lights in the area went off. That's because you do have a manual click switch right above the bed right there that you can reach when you're in bed. Now, um, again, you've got a privacy shade inside the front windshield, and that is a windshield, not a window. It's a higher grade. Basically, that's installed just like uh, an automotive windshield, guys. Um, so, you know, people aren't going to be peeking at you at night, anything like that. The extra vent above the bed plus the cross breeze windows beside the bed will give you some excellent, excellent airflow here. And you've got this extra large 4K TV. <laughs> Cougar's even using more, like, up-to-date electronics in that regard. And this thing is big. It is, like I said, everything in this is just, like, bigger, you know, compared to most uh, lighter weight trailers. And... They never, like I said, never intended to build an ultralight. It just kind of became lighter somehow. I don't know. Um, but the big TV obviously can pivot out and swing out. So it's a no neck wrecker. When you're sitting at the theater seat, kind of in the position where I'm standing, this thing will open right up and be very comfortable, easy viewing for you. You can obviously tilt it uh, over toward the bed. Now, I want to give you just kind of a, a quick look at the, the kitchen area right here before I open everything up. And I've got a cool opportunity right now because I've moved away from the entry door long enough. The entry door light has turned off. One of the neat things on uh, Cougars is they use motion sensitive entry lighting and blammo, there you go. What I like about this is when you, uh, when you leave for a while, you don't want the light on inside the camper by that window because that will cause a collection of bugs and nobody wants that. Um, so the light will kick on only when you come back and you're not going to get a cloud of gnats rolling into your RV. Um, the other thing is it's nice to be able to see it, uh, to, uh, like just get it in and out when you're packing real quick. Or if you're just trying to sneak into the bathroom real fast, um, you can hard turn it on or hard turn it off. Or it has the third motion mode, obviously. Now, <laughs> you see all the cabinet space here. Let's blow this sucker open and see what she has to offer. So starting with that newer, bigger 70 by 80 king bed, we've got easy lift storage to kind of like a storage trunk right here. And um, a lot of brands uh, who build the similar floor plans, like the ones I've mentioned, you have to kind of lose some of this space right here to include a little floating table so that, because one of the things when you get rid of the dinette and you have just a theater seat is people go, well, where do I eat? Well, most brands are going to include a floating table that you keep down there. Cougar doesn't. You maintain full storage here in their bigger camper. Now you see that it's also separated inside to outside. 
What they did here is they redesigned their kitchen countertops so that if you want to set a, a set of chairs, bar stools, whatever, you've got this just enough of a, a little sort of dining station right here where, you know, this is a couple's coach first and foremost, but when you're ready to have a quick bite to eat, if you're not under the awning on the picnic table, right here you go. You've got all that. Now, uh, man, where do I even begin? Let's start up top here. Huge amounts of overhead cabinetry. Um, just to give you an idea for how big this is, I took one of the sink covers and just tossed it up into that cabinet, and you can see that it can easily close unobstructed. There's a tremendous amount of storage capacity within that. Now, uh, beside the microwave over here, um, they they doubled this up. They made this a double cabinet. Like, if this would have been just the overhead cabinet here, I'd have been like, oh, neat, that's great. They didn't. They doubled it. They made this thing even bigger. Now, back here by that motion-sensitive light that we saw earlier. Thank you, motion-sensitive light. I'll tip you later. Um, we got this, well, this might be bigger than the refrigerator size closet. And in point of fact, some brands that build a layout like this will actually put the refrigerator right here. And I love that little shoe garage uh, shelf right there. That simple separator right there clearly defines the coat closet or the broom closet because you notice that that and then you got like a hat shelf in there just all the little touches and details they're so on point now down here one thing you're going to notice in the 22 rbs is an amazing amount of countertop prep space there's more in here than some 35 foot fifth wheels that we carry every day at halid rv between the recessed stainless sink with that high-rise sprayer faucet because of its uh, covers and the recessed stovetop over here with the backlight um, sort of, um, you know, nightlight knobs, I like to call them. You've got all sorts of space here. You can really just spread everything right out. You don't have to stack anything up or make a mess. Now, anywhere you see countertop space, you're going to see storage below it. And I love that extra drawer even under the oven. They wasted no opportunity to maximize the total amount of countertop storage and prep space, including the area right there for a big wastebasket. You've got uh, more drawers right next to the sink for the campsite cook. They've put outlets in intelligent positions where they're easy to get to. Um, you've also got uh, an outlet up here, like right under that uh, stereo, as well as right here. Now. A lot of these things, uh, you notice how with the elevated countertop right here, it's not the greatest height variance to get to that overhead plug. And they need to use overhead plugs, by the way, because it's, it's kind of tricky to put uh, plugs in the sidewalls of a laminated trailer for wiring reasons. And one thing Keystone's very good about is high wiring reliability. But this one right here, it's so close to the countertop due to the extended overhead cabinet that it, it makes hooking up appliances like a coffee maker or something right here very simple and easy. And if it's, you know, camping for you is not about simple and easy, well, then what is it about? Because I, I doubt you're like Tina Turner, Knight Turner. You know, I don't think you're like, my camper never does anything nice and easy. I bet you didn't think you'd get a Tina Turner reference in a camper tour today, did you? <laughs> and then as big as it all is, it, it just sort of... It tucks itself all away, and this thing goes back to feeling huge and spacious once again. Um, now, now, speaking of nice and easy, you're going to enjoy a nice, comfortable experience with the fact that this has a standard 15,000 BTU air conditioner. You don't have to upgrade the air in a Cougar. What's cool, part of the reason that this has a lot of that big camper feel is the way Keystone does um, build production standardization. What they'll do is they'll say, what is our very largest Cougar travel trailer? Which is a 37-foot triple-slide bunkhouse that weighs over 9,000 pounds. They say, okay, what size air conditioner, furnace, chassis, tires, suspension, etc. do we need for that? Then they'll use that heavy-duty stuff all the way through. So this being their smallest travel trailer, it has probably an overbuilt structure, an over-appointed uh, air conditioner, a larger furnace than you should ever rightfully need in a little camper like this. Speaking of heating and cooling, Cougar has made some significant improvements in this regard as of this windshield generation. They have improved uh, the summertime air conditioning efficiency by adding a couple um, vents in their attic, which is the 5-inch the air gap above the ceiling panel that you can't see. And what that means is that this RV more organically spills heat out in the summer so that it's not just uh, broiling from the top down. Now, what's cool, you're thinking, yeah, but if the heat can get out, what about winterizing? Well, 
in the winter. They've also upgraded all of their heating and cooling package. And anything that says Cougar, even this little 22 RBS travel trailer, is now 0 to 100 degree rated standard. Cougar has really defined themselves as something exceptional in class. Um, so, once again, speaking of nice and easy, here's the easy part of the nice and easy. This is in command, and I love this thing. This is a slick system. So just at a glance, it acts as your tank monitor panel. You can check your battery, you can activate your water pump, your water heater, control all that right here. And instead of having switches where you're like, is, what is that? Is that on or off? You can look at this. I can tap gas or electric or gas and electric. I mean, it's simple. It's easy. You can turn your water pump right on and off here. You can control uh, all the interior lights right here. Remember, you do have headboard lights right there. If I open this up with the default passcode, it is usually zeros or, yeah. We can control our heating and cooling, our awning, our slides on this panel. And anything you can do on this panel, you can do on your phone, guys. So... If you are sitting in that theater seat and you get too hot or too cold or in bed if you get too hot or too cold at night, grab your phone off that stand beside you on the bed or the stand beside you on the sofa. Turn the air up or down, whatever you want, the heat up or down. You can turn the lights off and on. If you're sitting in that theater seat, turn all the main cabin lights off and dim the lights above your head and enjoy a movie. Put the grandkids down. You know, whatever you got to do, you can do little things. Um. Oh, yeah. Speaking of grandkids, that's another question people have, is they say, yeah, but, you know, what if my grandkids come with me? One of the neat parts about this wall-hugging theater recliner seat right here is that a lot of people don't realize it can, if you take a look, fold right down into a bonus sleeper. Um, and uh, it is, it's awesome for grandkids like that. And frankly, it's probably better for two kids than it would have been for, uh, like, with a single u dinette because now the kids are kind of organically separated and they're not going to kick themselves. Plus, this is just way more comfortable to sit on during the day, kick your feet up, lounge around, relax. Man, these guys are dialed in. Before I forget again, because I, uh, there's so much to cover in here, larger 8 cubic foot fridge and freezer. Because again, what is this? Lighter weight, but bigger stuff. Um... So I think you get the idea for in-command. Now, if you don't want to come over to the panel to constantly turn the lights on and off, you have a light switch right here where you can do that too. So you're not stuck using just the panel. Um, and this right here is your thermostat probe, in case you're curious. A lot of people ask about that. Now, as we come into the bathroom, they, they're lighter weight, yet they didn't. They certainly didn't scale back on construction. Again, their, their intention was not to be lightweight. It just kind of happened. And that is the fact that, if you look, they have extra thick interior walls. And this is pretty keystone common. They fully frame out all these walls so that that door, even without the jack sound right now, it's going to work the right way every single time. Now, here in the bathroom, they uh, one of the problems with a lot of floor plans like this is there's nowhere to keep some towels in the bathroom. And this is not the biggest cabinet up here in the corner, guys. But it's enough to keep a couple towels in the bathroom right where you need them so you don't have to do the naked streak out. And it's mounted up high enough where even a tall person like me, you're not going to hit your head if you get up off that porcelain foot flush stool. Nor are you going to bash your knees around because you've got tons of leg room in here. You also have tons of elbow room and tons of head room in the shower with this larger radius shower between the vaulted ceiling and that skylight position right in front of the shower head right there, this is very tall person friendly. If the wife and I were just looking for a smaller couple's camper today, this one's on my short list, my personal short list, just to give you an idea. I'm not, and, and I actively camp, guys. I'm not just a guy that slings these things. I go camping. Bigger sink for adult-sized hands. I like that. Now, something I didn't tell you is that even in the kitchen and even here in the bathroom, we have sealed edge countertops so that if you splash water around, nothing's going to get damaged. And they gave you every ounce of space they could, just like the kitchen. This is paneled off for things like um, water pump access for winterizing. And I just don't know that there's a, a detail on this that they missed. The only way you could say, yeah, but uh, they should do this, that, or the other thing, is if you made the camper bigger. They utilized the space that was available in this one to the fullest of its potential. And I gotta say, not just the inside, outside too, I don't think this thing has ever looked better. 
Um, to quickly gloss over some of the updates, obviously we've got that new nose with the automotive inset windshield. Um, the in command is a more recent addition. Those more ride step above steps in the back that are just fantastic. Those are a recent addition here. And also the, uh, the fact that all Cougars, including these travel trailers, are now 0 to 100 degree tested and functional is just a fantastic set of qualities and a small fifth er, not fifth wheel pardon me i'm used to saying cougar in relation to fifth wheel with insulation capacity but in a small camper having that extra insulation capacity that is not something you typically find a lot of guys claim it but most of them haven't actually done testing like Cougar has. We'll talk more about that as we go. There's a lot to cover. I don't want to miss anything. I kind of mentioned inside how like we have the, the heavier door frames, the thicker interior walls, the thicker side walls, the heavier chassis and suspension and structure. That's part of the reason this has the industry's most comprehensive structural warranty. There are plenty of three-year structural warranties out there. They're not all created equally. Keystones covers the most things. Um, you know, they have the most backing behind that. Now, just like last year, we have this extra large front storage compartment up here, and you see that we have equally sized doors on both sides. Now, that little blue coily hose, that'll hook up to the uh, outside shower area. Um, uh, actually, the little water docking station specifically, because this has a water dock station and an outside shower. But that will uh, hook up, and it has a residential fitting end on it, so you can use like normal garden hose sprayer things. Now, in command down there, that thing, this this is awesome. This is the brain, uh, the heart, and the soul of this trailer. And I always forget to unscrew these things before I get to them. And they put a huge, long screw thread on it. There we go. Okay. So what is this? The shield's there to keep it protected. Long story short, like I said, it's kind of... Think of it like the CPU of, of a Cougar. The Cougar CPU. First of all, gives you an easy way to see the full color-coded wiring that you get in all Keystone RVs. They were the first manufacturer to do that. Secondly, God forbid that digital control panel inside or your phone quits working, you can use that selector knob and that switch right there to uh, choose things like the awning, uh, the, the slides, etc., the mechanical things of the RV. To uh, You still have a physical button to force close those, which is nice. Plus, they each have their own manual override. So there's like three ways to always handle anything. You know? Generally speaking, thing with in-command, we don't see people actually need to use the switches in that passer. That's an emergency override that never seems to get utilized. And that's a good thing, because that means that they perform. And the service records on our Cougars, really our Keystones in general, have been pretty good, so that makes sense. Um, the uh, So it's a superior wiring system that offers better Bluetooth connectivity, um, whereas there's nothing wrong with... Um, uh, uh, one control by Lippert, nothing wrong with it. You'll find that on a lot of Jayco products and other things. But it requires Wi-Fi connectivity. The uh, the So you have to like drop off your park Wi-Fi if you're using that. So they each do things, they kind of do the same thing, but in a little different fashion. Now those bigger baggage doors, you can see that they have the newer metallic slam latches. So higher quality latches on this um, with the easy one hand magnet holdbacks. And we'll come back to the awning, but you can see they put the biggest awning on that they could. And I'm just, man, this looks just like their fifth wheels now. And that's basically what they did. They said, hey, you know what? We really like the, the look of that front living Cougar 367 fifth wheel. Like that that you'd find here at Halet RV. Um, why don't we just do that? And they just did it all the way across the board. And then, and whether the camper's big or small, it's like the smaller it is, the more impactful it feels by making this look big. But in a bigger RV, like a 29 BHS that I also love, it will have a private bedroom. So that will always make it feel bigger, you know? Another thing, bigger. Bigger propane tanks. Heavier rated uh, awning motors, tongue jack motors, etc. Now, a uh, couple things over here. We have a, uh, a simple water and cable docking station next to the simple side mount solar prep. That's what l allows you to, to park this thing. Um, in the shade and you can kind of have a mobile panel to uh, move around and chase the sun now down below here a couple things Cougars have standard power stabilizer jacks and then like I said they are now all even this little trailer this is the smallest Cougar they make they are all 0 to 100 degree functional that's that's new at the time of this filming uh, basically we're gonna call it the windshield generation is the thermal generation if you will how did they accomplish that? It begins up top. They put a layer of um, heat reflective thermal layering in the roof, wrap it down the nose cap and all the way through the underbelly. Now they've always had a large 30,000 BTU furnace on Cougar models, like a big fifth wheel basically. And they've had an enclosed belly for a long, long time. 
but uh, they've also added that thermal layering down there to keep the heat in the underbelly in the cold camp season. Now, um, if uh, you know anything you do to improve heating efficiency, organically improves cooling efficiency as well. So that's this will also perform better in sun country. Um, now, they've rerouted all of their heat lines in the underbelly. Instead of just having a single heat duct that just kind of dumped heat into the underbelly, they ran the heat line along the frame rail. And they did that because that's also where Cougar runs the water lines, is along the frame rail. So basically what they've done is they've, uh, they've protected the water lines uh, by giving them a layer of organic heat diffusion from the heat run. So the heat run and the water lines are basically touching each other, so it's helping heat the water lines. Now they have T-junctions off that heat line to direct force air heat on each of the holding tanks. And then they added holding tank heaters. The switch is actually in the driver's side uh, pass-through area. So they've uh, added uh, you know, reflective heat layering in the roof, nose, and floor. Um, they've improved their heat ducting system in the belly. They've protected the water lines. They've, and they've done double tank prevention measures. It's awesome. It's awesome what they're doing. <laughs> I, I don't. This is a this is a hard product to sell against. I feel bad for anyone who says, "Well, I was also looking at a Cougar." What do you guys have like that? That's a hard day at the office because this thing is a stud right now. All LED tail end marker lights. They are brighter. They last longer, and they're safer because they ignite faster. At 60 miles an hour. Those LED uh, tail lights are going to give the person behind you up to five feet of additional stopping time because they flash virtually instantaneously. We are ready for backup or observation cameras. We've got the roof ladder because this not only has fully walkable roofing, but also fully walkable slide boxes. The construction of a Cougar, or really a Keystone slide box in general, is uh, uh, pretty darn heavy duty, the fact that you can walk on it. Now, last year they had a folding cargo rack on the back here. Not everybody, like, was into it. Like, it was neat to look at, but not everyone really enjoyed the function. A lot of people just wanted something more obvious for bikes. So what they did is they swapped that out for a standard 2-inch receiver hitch on the back here for bikes and accessories. So it has never been easier to add a bike rack to the back of a Cougar. And um, the uh, thing here is because it's factory installed, you can do that with no voiding of your factory structural warranty. Isn't that smart? This is built to perform. It's not built hoping you screw up the warranty. Uh, these are such a crowd pleaser, and I am among that crowd. The Moride Step Above Stable Steps here with those adjustable foot pegs, so it doesn't really matter what kind of campsite you're at. Um, like, the camper's actually nose high to the sky right now. It's not level. So I extended that foot out to make this thing come down and land properly, and there you go. It works like a charm. Because the steps are supporting your weight when you come in and out, it doesn't cause the whole camper to rock and roll around, which is something you experience in a greater capacity in a shorter floor plane like this versus a longer one where that will organically resist that kind of jouncing and trouncing. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, we have some, you know, just real simple outside TV hookups here. Um, the awning. Uh, well, actually, before I get there, the entry door. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about on this guy. Anti-slam. What's nice about that, obviously, it doesn't bang against the side of the trailer. But it also opens further, so that sharp little point down there, it is out of the way. Now, screen door here. Actually, oops, let me open that. One of the neat things on the screen door is, like, if you want to leave the, uh, you want to be outside, but maybe you're watching the grandkid for the weekend, pull this down, pull it over, and you can lock the screen door. Well, obviously you have to shut it properly. <laughs> but you get the idea. You can actually lock the screen door here. So you can keep the grandkiddos from kind of like falling out of the thing. Pull that down, flip that over. There you go. Screen door is locked. Now the grandkid can't fall out of the camper. Isn't that nice? Heave this shut. I got it to touch, but I didn't get it to, uh, to, to latch. There you go. And the bigger entry handle for easy coming and going. Now as we back up, I want to draw some attention to this awning because they put the biggest awning on it they really could. If they made it longer, it would have covered the water heater door, which, <laughs> bad. If they made it longer, they would have covered the front baggage door, which, obviously, bad, again. Um, it's also easy tilt. With literally just two fingers, you can crank that awning arm down on an angle. And, uh, you know, for like a drizzly rainy day like today, you can still sit out there in your favorite chair, put one of those little indoor-outdoor rugs out, you know, just walk around barefoot, little wet foot for the day, and 
hey, that's kind of fun camping. That's just camping, man, you know? Um, also, of course, full LED lighting under that awning. Now you can remote control the awning and the awning lights right from your phone via in command. I love that system. Now, obviously, we carry a lot of different RVs here at Halet RV, and whether it's new or used, I've been on the roof now of thousands of campers. I've climbed up and down a lot of ladders, and there's always something that's kind of stuck out about Cougar's roofing to me. It just, it does not flex. I can just walk around this thing like nobody's business, and even though it's wet, the, uh, the roof membrane itself has a textured sort of grip, so it's grabbing my shoes right now. I just have to deal with wet toes from the rain. And don't worry about my footprints. Uh, we don't charge you extra to have the camper clean when you leave here at Halet RV, because we don't do hidden dealer fees. But we do everything else, and we'll talk about that in a second. So up here, this roof is incredibly sturdy, strong. It, it doesn't flex buckle under my feet, and I'm about, I'm, I've put a little weight back on. I'm closing in on that 200 pound mark, probably 195.897 pounds right now, to be, you know, just a guess. Um, <laughs> but I want to point out how heavy handed they are with all their sealants up here. They're not trying to save that extra five cents by minimal sealing this thing. They over seal everything, near comically, really. Um, you know, for the point of longevity. They want you to enjoy the maximum amount of time before you, you need to start worrying about touch-up spots on any of your seals up here. Although you should always be doing some regular cleaning and maintenance. Uh, you know, if you live in a, a not sunny place, you don't use the camper often, maybe washing conditioning once a year is enough. But if you live in sun country, three would probably be better, with two being average normal. What I want to point out though again, the superior walkability and load structure of this roof and the heavy handedness of the Cougar team on all their sealants so that you just get to go camping and enjoy. Because the R in RV is recreational, it's supposed to be fun. That's what Cougar's goal is and that's what our goal is here at Halet RV. I think maybe that's one of the reasons that we do so well with the Cougar product is they really fit within, you know, the way we think about camping, because we go camping at Halet RV. We don't just sell camping. So, whether it's hitching, pieces, parts, trades, financing, truck and trailer package deals, RV deliveries, or anything in between, we only do everything for you here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. So, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.